the Adam Audio T10S has presented me with a bit of a quandary. I thought I didn't need a subwoofer. Now I'm not so sure. Hi folks, I'm Mike and I hope you're well. I'm beginning to think that Federal Audio here in Australia are a little bit evil. They sent me the Adam Audio T10S to try for a while, probably knowing that I'd end up wanting to buy it. But I guess the good news is, because they didn't simply give it to me, that I'm not compelled to give it a good review. Good or bad, I do think there are some things that you should know about it before you buy it. But before we get into that, let's take a look at the specs. The T10S was specifically designed to complement the T-series of near-field monitors from Adam Audio, but of course it could be used with any near-field studio monitors. It has a frequency response of 28 to 120 Hz and has a nice max SPO of 104 dB at 1 meter. The downward-facing 10-inch woofer is separated from the floor with four high-grade rubber feet and what I have to describe as an extremely sturdy cabinet, something not to be underestimated in a subwoofer. The front is a typically simplistic design with cut-off corners which match the rest of the T-Series design, the logo and a simple power LED to let us know when the power is on. By the way, the unit goes to standby mode if no signal is detected for 15 minutes and wakes up again when it detects a signal, kind of handy in my experience. On the rear we see the main connectors where you can use unbalanced RCA or balanced XLR, which is what I would recommend. There are a number of ways that you can connect to your system, but most commonly you connect the balance outputs from your audio interface to the inputs of the subwoofer, and then connect the outputs of the subwoofer to the inputs of your main monitors. Also at the rear we see a connection for a foot switch. This enables you to bypass the T10S and only use your main monitors. Unfortunately, there's no foot switch supplied, so I use my Boss FS5L latching foot switch. This is a really handy feature for testing your system in different modes and giving your neighbors a break. The crossover switch determines at what frequency the low end gets sent to the sub rather than the main monitors and its setting will depend on which monitors you're using. The phase switch is used to invert the phase of the subwoofer and doesn't affect the main monitors. This can be helpful in rectifying phase issues which may occur due to speaker placement. Finally, we have the level control to increase or decrease the volume. The 0 dB setting here is matched to the 0 marks on the Adam T-Series monitors. So the setup comprises of two main stages, setting the level correctly and also correcting for phase issues. With the first stage setting the level, Adam Audio supply you with some files that you can play in your door. And then they've got an excellent tutorial video here on YouTube that I'll put a link to in the description down below. That's gonna help you to set the level of your sub according to your main monitors to make sure that they're balanced. Obviously, you don't want it to be too quiet or too loud. You need it to be just right. With the second stage correcting phase issues, it's a little bit more tricky in some ways. Ideally, if you can, you want to set your sub up at the same distance from your listening position as your main monitors are, but often due to physical restrictions, that's not possible. So then you have to go about the process of moving the sub to a correct position so that you are avoiding phase issues. Again, they cover that in their tutorial video here on YouTube, and again, I'll make sure I put a link for that in the description down below. I highly recommend that if you buy this sub, you don't don't skip this setup phase. It's really a big advantage to you to make sure it's done correctly. So up until now, I've been checking the low end of my mixers using headphones. And this is especially useful if you're in a room with no sound treatment. However, there are some things to consider. Of course, not all headphones are equal in the low end, so you need to choose them carefully. The other thing you need to remember is you'll never hear the low end in the context of the rest of the mix through monitors all at the same time. And the last thing I'd like you to consider is the fact that you'll need to make sure the fit of the headphones on your head is really good and consistent. You could find with some headphones that even as you move your head around, it will change your perception of the bass. So keep those things in mind. Now, if you're in a room with no room treatment, especially with no bass traps, then I would not recommend getting any sub at this moment. Take care of your room treatment first, get the sub later. 
Now, one of the other considerations you may have is the genre of music you're producing. If you're producing surround sound 5.1, then you definitely need a sub. Uh, things like EDM, maybe hip hop, something like that, then you probably will get a big advantage from having a sub. But other genres such as, say, acoustic music or classical music, you may well be able to do without a sub. So think that through before you go ahead on this path. Now, if you do decide that you want to go ahead and get a sub and you're considering the T10S, here's my list of pros and cons, starting with the pros. Oh, just quickly, before I do get into the pros, if you are finding this video useful, could you go ahead and hit the like button for me? Do it right away so that you don't forget. And if you do like this kind of content, make sure you subscribe and ring the bell so that you're notified about my other videos. So, the pros. As a little bit of background, I've been using the Atom T8Vs as my main monitors for around about a year now. Now, when I first got them, I absolutely loved them. And that has continued. I still continue to adore these monitors. They really help me to get good mixes much more quickly, much more efficiently. So I was really interested to see how the T10S would kind of fit in with that and whether they live up to that and I have not been disappointed. Of course things like the build quality are excellent, there's no vibrations or anything like that that shouldn't be there, all the connectors are great, everything you would expect from Adam Audio. Now one of the main things or the main reasons why I really love this is I get to hear more of that low end. It's a little bit troubling actually because there's things that I was not hearing before in my mixes and I let those mixes out into the wild. Well, that's history. The thing about a, a sub like this is it's not about making the low end louder. It's about extending the range of that low end. It's important to understand that. So I'm just hearing a bit more down there that I couldn't hear before. And of course, now that I can hear it, I can correct it much easier. Now, the other thing I like about it is that it takes some of the load off of your main monitors. It enables the woofers in those main monitors to act a little bit more efficiently. They're not having to deal with those very low frequencies. So there's less chance of distortion and you're just going to hear more from those as well. So it sort of improves the whole system in that way. Um, the other thing I just really like as a little side note is the foot switch. I like the fact that you can switch that in and out. That's going to be useful if you've got neighbours that you care about at all um, and if you're working late at night but also I just have got into the habit of flicking between the two the system without the sub and with the sub as well as I'm checking my mixes I find that very very handy indeed but there's got to be some cons I want to be objective about this so let's talk about those next so I have to say, I've really struggled to come up with some cons here. In fact, I've only really come up with one con. The rest is just more sort of guidance, if you like. The one con that I can say is that I really do love that foot switch. It's just a bit of a shame that they didn't give you one in the box and you have to buy one separately. But that would never be a reason why you don't buy this sub. That would just be sort of cutting your nose off to spite your face. The other things, though, that I want to mention are sort of cautionary things. If you don't have any bass treatment, you don't have any bass traps, I would not recommend buying this sub or any other sub, okay? I think I made that clear earlier, but I'll just make it clear again here. Now, the other thing is you do want to make sure that you follow the setup. I didn't do that at first and I was getting sort of mixed results. After I went through the setup, I got much, much better results. It's important that you do that and that you're getting the balance of, in terms of level of this sub with your other monitors and also correcting for any phase. Now, the other thing you may want to consider as well is to supplement this with some um, sound correction software, something like Sonox Sound ID Reference, which I recently reviewed. You can see a link for that up here here. Um, I wouldn't say it's absolutely necessary, but it can really help you a lot as well in general. So those are the things that I would consider, and it's just that one con. So there it is. I've had this sub for around about two to three months and it looks like I'm going to have to buy it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Are you considering the T10S? Have you got any questions for me at all? Have you already bought it? Give me your feedback. Let me know how you're getting along with it. Also check the links in the description for some great places where you can buy this sub. And while you're there, check out my link for patreon.com where for as little as $1 per month, you can help me help you by making more videos like this and I'll see you in the next video.